Okay, so we're back here and we're going to add some more geometry to our pattern based curtain panels that we've created at the moment. They're just a sheet of glass. Now, what I suggest you do before you go any further, I've already done it, is if you just go up to switch windows through here, you'll see that you've still got your original family. It was probably called Family 1 to you. Um, just click into there, open up that Family 1, and then go up to the Revit button and click Close. It'll ask you, do you want to save changes? Say no. Actually close that down without saving any changes. Because you've already loaded that in to this project and then renamed it to this family here called Trust Braced. Okay, so we want to close down the one called Family 1. Don't save changes. Then when you've done that, come over to your project browser here and underneath curtain panels, find Trust Braced and right click on it and edit it. And what that will do then is it will open up the family editor again, but this time it will be opened up under the file called Trust Base. Okay, and that's the one that we want to keep working on and keep loading back into our project all the time. Okay, so to make this, the other thing I'll, I'll explain to you quickly here too is this grit tile pattern that we use through here. When we started the project, you can see under the properties here, we could have picked a range of different patterns to base our original geometry on. We just left it with rectangle by default. Now don't go and change to any of these others now, because what you'll do is you'll lose the geometry that you've created under rectangle, and you'll have to create that geometry again. So I'll leave it under rectangle, so we keep all this geometry we've got. Now what I'm gonna do then is I'm gonna tab through until I find that sheet of glass that we made not the form element surface, once more time and find the full form element, click on that and come down to your uh, temporary hide isolate tool down the bottom here, I call it my sunglasses, click on your sunglasses and click hide that element and that'll just tidy up that element and get it out of our, our way so we can keep working. Now the next thing I want to do to keep working is I've got to make sure that I select I think one of these reference planes of these four very special adaptive points that we've got around here. So I'll click in my set work plane up here and I'll set the work plane up to be that work plane, the horizontal work plane of one of those points. And while that's the, the proper work plane, I'll then go to a reference line um, and I think I need to probably turn 3D snapping on and I'll do a reference line from that point over to this point over here. Okay, so it's going to actually snap to those points there. Just to make sure that has worked and will flex properly, click on your pattern over here and this dimension that we changed previously, just change to something else and, and, and flex that shape. So I'm going to make line 300 and press apply and you can see that the lines are all still staying connected to the proper points that they're supposed to stay to, so that's good. We can even leave it at 300 just for the moment, it really won't matter, so I'm going to zoom in on that. Now, another little command that's really handy with it, this point element. I'm going to click on a point element, and I'm going to place it along that line that we've just created, just anywhere for the moment. And then I'm going to hit escape a few times, and so I can now click on that reference point. And you can see what that reference point has done is created a reference plane or a work plane on itself that is perpendicular to the element that it was placed on. It's very, very handy to be able to construct geometry in 3D off that plane. But the other thing you can do with that, over in its properties, under dimensions here, there's a normalized curve parameter there that you can change that value to. I'm going to change it to 0.5 and press enter or apply. And what that does is that drives that point to be 0.5 along the length of that line. So that so it should, we can check this out again now by selecting the tile pattern, changing that figure to something else again, and that point, as this rectangle becomes bigger again, click apply, you can see the point is still in the middle of that line. And that's what we wanted to do. We wanted to be able to find the midpoint of that shape. No matter what this shape ends up as, we want to find a diagonal line through it and then find the midpoint through that diagonal line. Okay, so I next want to find 
see this point has got a reference plane on it so I'm going to just to make sure of things I'm going to set that reference plane using the set command up here the set work plane and I'm going to click on that point so hopefully that stays as my set work plane now and I'm going to go and grab another reference line here and draw a reference line probably I imagine I won't even want 3D snapping on because I've got this reference plane established. It might be better without 3D snapping. And if I click on that point there and go straight up, I'm going to type a value just to start off with of 450. So I'll escape out of that. So I've got this hopefully vertical line that is 450 millimeters tall, measured from the, the center point of our shape through here. So once again, I'm just going to double check that everything's still right here by selecting the grid and changing this dimension again. Keep changing it. To, this is called flexing. Just to make sure everything's staying connected when I click apply. And yes, I've still got that line, which is 450 there. Okay. Now, what I'm going to do here is I'm going to define some parameters which will, which will drive this geometry. And one of the parameters that I want will be the length of that line so it looks like i'm going to set my work plane back up i can just place the placement plane here and set it back up to level one and i'm going to use the dimension tool i use the shortcut key as di for dimension to stay on aligned now i'm going to make sure i get that adaptive point and that adaptive point and i'm going to place that dimension somewhere out here anywhere, anywhere like that will do Mine is a little bit close to that one, so I think I might just nudge it in a little bit. So it's a little bit away from there. Okay, now I'm going to set that particular... If By the way, if I haven't told you to do this before, you might be finding this hard to read the text here if you haven't gone and changed your scale to 1 is to 5. Uh, at the scale that we're working at, that would work quite well at 1 is to 5. Now, I want this, I want to know what this dimension is for something that I'm planning on doing through here. So I'm going to select that dimension, give it a label at the top here, go into label, drop that down, add a parameter, and this parameter I'm going to call it diagonal. Okay, um, it's going to be an instance parameter, and I want it to report itself back to me all the time, tell me what it is. Um, so I'm going to click that reporting parameter on there and click OK. Right, you'll see why I've done that just in a second. What I'm going to do now is select this line through here. Now, it, when I select it, it pops up with a temporary dimension here. If I select this little icon next to the temporary dimension, it'll make it into a permanent dimension. I can click out, so there it is, it's permanent dimension being the length of that line. I can now select that line there, give it a label, and I'm going to add a parameter, and I want to call this parameter offset. Okay. Now this one's also going to be an instance parameter, but it doesn't need to report itself to me. So I'm going to click OK to that. Okay. Now what we're going to do here now is we're going to go up into these family types up here. And I've got my two dimensions that I've created, both diagonal and offset. What I should be able to do now is click into offset under the formula and say that equals diagonal divided by 3, forward slash for divide, diagonal divided by 3. Click apply, and back in the drawing, you can now see that whatever the diagonal happens to be, this length of this line called offset will always be a third of that length. So I'm just going to click OK to that. That was just to demonstrate to you that you can drive dimensions in Revit using these par parameters to drive each other using just simple formulas. So I'll just flex that again to make sure that is. So if I click on that and send this back to 600 again, and I can even leave the other one at 300 and press apply. So yes, that is a 600 by 300 now, which has got a new diagonal, and that new diagonal has has created a new offset for us. So I'll send the other one here to 600 just to square it up. Doesn't really matter, but it might be just a bit easy to see what we're working on if we do. Okay, so we've got that geometry now that appears to be flexing correctly and is going to be the framework for the rest of our geometry. 
So I'm going to stop the video there at that point, and when we come back, we're going to actually add some structure to that skeleton of the frame.